SMT Nation, we back. Nation, I want to take a look at this article from Shelby Brown, cord cutters. You know, what internet speeds do cord cutters actually need? I want to look at this from the home broadband, you know, home internet, especially like with fixed wireless and cable competition heating up. Like, what do you actually need, right, for home internet speeds, home broadband? Uh, we'll look at some numbers and you guys can make that decision as we go over today's details in this video. All right, link for the article will be in the description. Ways to support the SMT in the description as well. All right, so what type of internet speeds do you need? Well, it all kind of depends, right? And I hate to use that mantra, but it does, right? How many users on the network typically? How many devices connected? You have camera systems. You watch 4K content or is it 1080p? There's a lot of factors, uh, but there's really a very simple way to look at this. The way you want to consider it with video streaming being like the main culprit of bandwidth demand. You got to think about it like this. If you count the highest output resolution quality as kind of like the max potential pull on the network. So we're talking about maybe 4K content and you've got, you know, TVs as well as possibly some devices and they might be running in 4K, right? Maybe you want to count 1080p for most mobile devices. So let's say you got a couple of mobile devices, a tablet or something. So you got a few of those and then you've got a few TVs, right? What should you probably, you know, purchase with respect to a plan? Well, count it as about 10 to 15 megabits per second for a 4K stream. So let's call it 15 megabits according to Netflix, which I think uses a very proprietary compression technology to actually reduce the amount of bandwidth demand needed to run 4K. Uh, if I look at the um, if I look at the the Google definition, this is respect to YouTube. You're looking at about 20 megabits per second for 4K, five megabits for 1080p, right? So Netflix demanding a little bit less, and YouTube demanding a little bit more. So let's say you know you got a couple of TVs, two or three TVs, you got a couple of devices, or right? you're probably looking at a situation, you know, where you need at least 70 to 80 megabits per second in bandwidth, right? And you always want to be on the safe side, so get yourself 10 to 20% more at the very least. You're, you're pushing close to 100 megabits per second. Now notice I did not mention any type of processes or demands for anything that's considered to be power user. We're strictly only talking about, you know, simultaneous video feeds. And who's to say that you would ever have all three TVs running at the same time? all two or three, you know, connected devices running at the same time. That may not ever happen, right? So I would say 100 megabits per second on the downlink would be suitable for that type of setup. Now, if you've got additional demands, like, you know, you've got a gamer who's downloading titles, you know, and, and, and I don't know, somebody who's, you know, a high power, high power user for, for computer, PC gaming and content, I don't know, the creator, possibly, uplink is another thing to be concerned with right how much uplink can you get right i would say that probably a standard way to go to be on the safe side is about 20 to 30 megabits for uplink at the very least especially if you have, have a creator or of up uploading content or anything like that so these are all things that i think are fair expectations you know 480p and 720p those are all just things of the past you know we really need to be looking at the base minimum 1080p playback and really 4k for the future proof of all this so i'm looking at these definitions by netflix and then youtube saying to myself that's the case i i gotta be upwards close to 100 megabits per second just for video streaming demands at any given moment and all the other stuff that's going to need more right so let's let's get back to the reason to this video who provides this well i mean cable and fixed wireless can offer you these things what they can't offer you depending right fixed wireless access is latency which is important to some gamers and stuff like that so when it comes to speeds you're probably good with 100 to 150 megabits per second right for downlink but when it comes to other processes you know latency is a different aspect to it now fixed wireless access can give you this type of you know streaming bandwidth demand and meet the you know meet the call uh, definitely cable and fiber, but I think where things start to get different and they start to change things is gaming and latency sensitive or uplink demanding connectivity.
right? That's where it is. But if we're just talking about video streaming, right? And that's 95% of the traffic on your home network. This is probably good enough, right? I think fixed wireless is the winner, especially when you consider price, but lots of angles in today's video. First of all, tell me, what do you guys use? All right, what's your, uh, your tier? What's your plan? Uh, fixed wireless access, cable or fiber? Which type of plan do you have? Are you multi gig speed? Are you gigabit speed? Are you 500 meg? Are you 200 meg, 100 meg? What are you paying for? How much you paying? What are you getting? Tell me about it in the comment section. Tell me if it's good enough if you're looking to upgrade because some folks would say if they got a better option, they would take it. And that's another topic for another video. But tell me, share your experiences and what you think about this article. Go the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.